For more now on all this, I'm joined by John Stauber. He is the founder and executive director of the Center for Media and Democracy. It is a nonprofit organization that investigates and reports on public relations tactics. He's also the author of several books, including Weapons of Mass Deception, the Uses of Propaganda in Bush's War on Iraq. And Robert Zelnick. He spent more than 20 years with ABC News and served as their Pentagon correspondent from 1986 to 1994. Today he teaches journalism at Boston University. And for the record, we invited Fox News, CNN, MSNBC, CBS, ABC, and NBC to participate. But they declined our offer or did not respond. We've been talking to the Pentagon since Monday about participating in this segment, but when we finally scheduled it today, they were unable to supply a guest on short notice. Well, gentlemen, uh, John Stauber, let me begin with you. The Times spent two years investigating this story. They ultimately had to sue uh, to get documents out of the Pentagon. Uh, in your view, what is the essence of the story? What, is, what does it say that the Pentagon did? Well, Judy, first of all, congratulations to the News Hour for uh, doing this report. And it's a shame on the networks who were duped this way that they didn't show up to defend or explain their actions. What happened here was a PSYOPs campaign, an incredible government propaganda campaign whereby Donald Rumsfeld and Tory Clark, the head of public relations for the Pentagon, designed a program to recruit 75, at least 75, former military officers, as your report said, most of them now lobbyists or consultants to military contractors, and insert them beginning in 2002, before the attack on Iraq was even launched, into the major networks to manage the messages, to be surrogates, and that's the words that are actually used message multipliers for the Secretary of Defense and for the Pentagon. And is this the, program continues right up to now. And is the, the essence of this that what they did was Ill, what the Pentagon did was illegal? Yes, what they did was illegal. Now, the Pentagon might contest that, but we've had various laws on the books in our country going back to the 1920s. It is illegal for the U.S. government to propagandize citizens in this way. In my opinion, this war could have never been sold if it were not for this sophisticated propaganda campaign. And what we need is congressional investigation of not just this uh, Pentagon military analyst program, but all the rest of the deception and propaganda that came out of the Bush administration and out of the Pentagon that allowed well, them we wanna... to sell and manage this war. And well, we want to keep this, for the purposes of this, this discussion, focused on, uh, on this particular uh, report. Uh, let's turn to Bob Zelnick. And... Uh, Bob, you covered the Pentagon for, what, eight years for ABC. Correct. How surprised were you to see this report? I wasn't surprised at all. In fact, when I covered the Pentagon, I often sought uh, information from retired generals and admirals and... Uh, colonels because I knew they were well informed. I knew they kept in touch. I knew they had drinks at the Army Navy Club. I knew they went to uh, Army Navy football games on special trains together. Uh, I knew that many of them were serving as what we called beltway bandits or consultants. So I, I wasn't surprised at all except for the, by the amount of space devoted to this piece by the New York Times. And if I were giving advice to anybody, it would be... Uh, if you have an admiral on who is, or a general who is currently a consultant to the Pentagon, that should be disclosed right at the top of the interview. But we don't, uh, as networks, they, we didn't have these people on because they were uh, uh, neutral. We had them on because they knew what they were talking about. They had spent their lives in military affairs. So the fact that they were recruited, uh, as the article and as, and as John Stauber has just cited, that they were recruited... Uh, by the Secretary of Defense, by other people working for him specifically to get the story out, you're saying is entirely in keeping with what you've seen the Pentagon do? I, I don't think the Pentagon recruits for ABC News, at least it didn't when I worked there, and I don't think they recruit for Fox or uh, CNN or any of the other networks or cable operations. I think the term recruit was, was used rather loosely to, to mean they, they recommended perhaps uh, uh, s former generals or admirals to the various networks. And uh, when, once they had them, they kept them informed. And I think 
that's to the good. It meant that more information was available. If uh, occasionally a general or an admiral or a colonel who was retired and used in this fashion allowed himself to, to be dictated to, that's his fault. And I, I think any solid news person or executive editor running one of these programs would have dis discerned that early on and quit using them. John Stauber, if it was disclosed that these uh, retired military officers were talking to the Pentagon, uh, isn't it natural that they would have gotten briefings uh, uh, in some instances from the U.S. Well, let government? Me say I'm, let me say I'm just shocked to hear Bob Zelnick uh, depict and misrepresent what's going on here. And I have to wonder, Professor Zelnick, if you even read the New York Times article very closely. This is an instant where these people were recruited by Secretary of Defense Rumsfeld as yeah. agents of Pentagon propaganda and inserted into uh, the networks. Now, you can fault, and we should fault, the networks for not vetting these people properly, for not uh, being much more careful about their credentials. But the fact is, this program began with the Pentagon, with the Bush administration, recruiting these people uh, to be their surrogates. And those are the words that uh, the internal documents use. This is the Let's, Pentagon I, I papers get, of this war. Yeah, I want to give Bob I, I covered the first. I covered the first Gulf War, and they had just as many military analysts on the uh, networks and the cable uh, shops as they had this time. So it was uh, something that the networks perceived was in their own interest to develop these kinds of contacts. And it was in their interest. It certainly was in my interest as a Pentagon correspondent. Bob Zelnick, what about the well, fact I'm that... I'm shocked. Let me, let me just uh, follow up with, uh, with Bob Zelnick. The fact that, uh, according to the New York Times report, that most of these analysts uh, evidently had business ties to defense contractors, does that color their ability to be independent analysts? As I said, I think it should be disclosed right at the outset, uh, but what do we expect these guys to do after... Uh, 30 or 40 years in the service, during which time they've risen to the ranks of the most senior offices. Uh, we, we would uh, expect them to wind up as consultants or, as, uh, as I said, we call them beltway bandits. And, and I, I just don't get upset over something that's completely natural, completely to be expected, and widely known throughout the industry. It, it, this was completely unknown. John, John Stauber. These people were agents of the Defense Department. John Stauber, just to understand, are you saying that if what these analysts were doing at the Pentagon had been fully disclosed, if their business connections with the defense contractors had been fully disclosed, would that have made what they did uh, acceptable in that the audience watching these, these uh, interviews would have been aware? No, not at all. The full disclosure actually came about this Sunday, and actually it's only partial disclosure. Uh, and that disclosure is that, and the New York Times is the only news organization in full possession of these documents, the uh, Pentagon Military Analyst Program began with Donald, Donald Rumsfeld and Tory Clark. Seventy-five plus former military officers were recruited, and they delivered the talking points of the Bush administration to right. manage the news media coverage and public opinion of the war. The flow wasn't from journalists knocking on the door of the Pentagon and saying, excuse me, Admiral, I'd like to ask a question. Uh, first question, uh, are you retired and do you work for military contractors? That would be, that's totally fine. The flow was illegal government propaganda, recruiting these people and inserting them into the news and then hiring a company to measure and quantify how good a job they did of selling the war and managing press and public opinion. This John Stauber, like. thank you. John Stauber, we are going to have to leave it there. We will continue to follow this story. Uh, we know the New York Times uh, is continuing to report on it. John Stauber uh, and Bob Zelnick, we appreciate it. Thank you both. Thank you.